Here we are with part two of our HP Tuner series. We're going to look at the VCM editor. So go ahead and open it up and the first thing you want to do is save the tune that's in your vehicle. Now that can be a little bit tricky. I just opened up HP Tuners and I previously had a tune open in HP Tuners so it's going to open that tune automatically. So here's the tricky part. If it boots up with a tune already loaded and you want to load the tune that's in your vehicle, you'll see that the read vehicle arrow is grayed out and you can't read your vehicle. However, the right vehicle icon is highlighted. So if you were to hit that, you can see it brings up this page, but we don't want to do that right now. What we want to do is we want to read the vehicle. So the first thing you're going to do is close the file here in the file menu. Now you can see that the green upload arrow is highlighted. You can hit that upload arrow. Now you can read immediately or you can gather info and I always recommend that you gather info because it's going to tell you what you're reading. If you just hit the read button you're going to blindly read whatever is hooked up to the network. Now currently there's a single E38 Gen 4 controller hooked up. You can see there's no TCM hooked up here. With HP tuners if you have an ECM and a TCM in network it's going to read both unlike EFI Live and we'll get more into that later. So let's close that because we want to look at some of the functionality of the editor. Now a lot of these icons are not highlighted because we don't have a tune open. So let's open a tune. By clicking on file it's going to give you the same options and more than these icons. So if I want to open a file I can hit the open file icon or I can come here to file and hit open. We're just going to pick a tune out here and you can see now that a tune is loaded a lot of these icons have lit up. So let's start here. If we go to file you can see we can open a tune, close a tune, save a tune, save a tune as. And what that means is when we read your stock tune, we're going to save it as a stock tune. Then when we want to modify it, we come down here, we save as, and then rename it. That way we keep a pure copy of the original tune, and then we have a second tune that we can modify and do whatever we want with without risking losing the original tune. You can export files, look at recent files, or exit the software. Edit can be useful because if you look at calibration details, it's going to bring up the VIN number, operating system, and some Cal IDs. And these CVNs are calibration verification numbers. Those are pretty important for emissions checks if you guys are subject to emissions checks like in California or Colorado. That's mainly what you're going to use Edit for in the beginning. A lot of this other stuff is pretty advanced. You're not going to really need to look at your history logs. You can do compares. So we'll take a look at this other stuff in another video. Compare is very important and we're going to talk about that when we go into these icons. Flash is basically to write the vehicle or read the vehicle. Tools, you have a calculator here which is self-evident. You can change the way that the windows display. Help is important as we discussed earlier to resync the V2, to put your application keys in, about your software, what version it is. And remember, you want to update HP tuners often. Here's our open file here. This is the save the current tune. So whatever tune is open, if you hit this icon, you're going to save that tune. If you want to change the tune or you want to save it as a different name, you do not have an icon here to do that like you do in EFI Live. You've got to come up here to file and then manually select save as. This is to close the tune. That's pretty obvious. This is calibration details, which is the same thing that we saw over there in edit. This is history logs, which we saw in edit. This is open a compare file, and that's going to become important when we start loading tunes, and we'll go over that later. Once you open a compare file, and let's just do that, you see that it brings you to Windows Explorer. We're going to go to this modded tune, and we're going to open it. Now this tune, this modded tune, is not what's currently loaded into your software. So if you were to write the vehicle, it would not load that modded tune. It would load the original tune. We're only using this tune as a compare. So if we were to open a parameter up, and I'm going to quickly open up one here. RPM versus gear. This is the information in the tune that's open. This is the information in the compare tune. Now you can see they're exactly the same. So if I click on this, this is going to show the differences between the two tunes. And they're all going to be zero because there are no differences. If there were differences, then you'd see numbers in here. So compare, current file, alternate file, 
and differences are going to become important. This is units and you can go between centigrade and Fahrenheit. This again is to upload the tune, this is to download the tune, and this is information and this can become important because if you have a problem loading a tune, reading a tune, you're going to click on this, you're going to connect to the vehicle, you're going to get the information on that vehicle. Once it gathers all this information, you're going to save it and email that to HP Tuner so they can troubleshoot. So let's close that right now because we want to talk about these lower icons. Favorites is pretty obvious. You can save favorite parameters and put them in this list. And that way you don't have to open all these other windows up to find the parameter you're interested in. Operating system is going to show you the options in the operating system. Now, some of you guys run math sensors and some don't. So this is basically going to be the basics of the operating system, the anti-theft system, that's vehicle anti-theft system. Starter fault checks are part of the anti-theft system. And in the early days, I actually pioneered that with EFI Live. There's a lot of different security checks that these systems go through. In 07 and 08, if the relay, the starter relay were unplugged from the power distribution center and the GMs and you tried to jump it, the computer would know that and it would disable the fuel. When we put this in a conversion vehicle, we have to disable that if we're not running a factory starter relay. Now you're going to spend a lot of your time here in engine. Engine's going to show you just a ton of stuff. And you can go from general to idle to airflow. And when you open up some of these tabs, you're going to see a bunch of other tabs below it. Here's a warning. Do not mess with anything unless you know what you're doing. If you come over here to torque management and start messing with some of these tables, it can have ramifications in other parts of the tune. So don't mess with anything unless you know what you're doing. Use the tunes that we send you or factory tunes until you know what you're doing when it comes to programming. That's the engine tab. When it comes to engine diagnostics, there's going to be a couple of tabs here. The most important being digital trouble codes. That's your codes. And there's two columns here. And here's what's important about this. Let's just say you want to turn off a code. Let's scroll down to a code that's active. So here we have camshaft position actuator circuit. Let's say you have an LS3 and you don't have a camshaft position actuator and you want to turn this code off. Well, you can't just uncheck this because that's not going to turn the code off. You have to uncheck this, then you got to come over here, and there's two ways that you can disable this error mode. One is to click on this down arrow and hit no error reported. When you select no error reported, that means that this code will not report to the engine controller or the ECM in this case. The transmission controller is separate. So remember, if you turn this off here, that's not going to affect the transmission. You can have this report on the first drive cycle, the second drive cycle, or have it report without a mill light. So if you don't want this to report, you have to hit no error reported. Now you're going to have other diagnostics in the exhaust for misfire, airflow, and then general. But again, most of you will not have to mess with any of this. Transmission is going to be all your transmission data. This happens to be a 6L80. So you can see this is an automatic. And of course, there's a manual transmission. Now, if you have a manual transmission, you can come over here and you can see the data on the manual transmission. And you've got shifting, scheduling, and pressures and all that. And again, don't mess with this unless you know what you're doing. Torque management in the Gen 4s was a lot less invasive than it was with the Gen 5s. And we'll look at the Gen 5 stuff later. Trans diagnostics are the same as the engine diagnostics. They just have to do with the transmission data. The fuel system is going to tell you a bunch of stuff. What kind of pump you have. Now, most of the Gen 5s run the variable speed pumps. You can change it to the fixed pump. This is a fuel pump control module, whether it's equipped or not. If you're not running a fuel pump control module and you don't want to report to the network, select this to no. This is our fuel pressure schedules. If we do have a variable speed pump, these are some other controls for the fuel pump, like how long it primes. This is about how big your gas tank is. And, and then there's some diagnostics for the fuel system. And again, we're not going to get into this in depth. This video is just basically to take a quick look at the software and what it's capable of. Under system, you're going to find several things that are going to be useful to us. Here is alternator control. So one of the things that we want to do is we want these vehicles to run at the voltage we want. And the Jeep likes to run at a certain voltage while the GM systems are a little more sophisticated. On the Gen 5s, GM have really smart charging and they can charge as little as 12 volts and upwards of 15 volts. Now the problem is the JK doesn't like that. So what we have to do is come in here and make some 
corrections to make it charge the way that we want. Under fans, there's going to be a lot of settings here. This is basically going to be your fan speed if you have a variable speed fan. You can change the type of fan that you have, whether it's discrete, discrete would be on off. Of course, you have all these different pulse with modulated fans. And we're going to pre-program that for you if you get a kit from us. So don't worry about that. If you got a supercharger, you got an intercooler pump, and then you got some air conditioning settings here. Speedo is going to be obviously to calibrate your speedo. Here's the calibration. I don't recommend messing with this unless you know what you're doing because, again, you can screw things up and your transmission may not shift right. Here's your speed limiter. GM limits most of their truck engines at about 100 miles an hour. And I've actually had guys call me and say, yep, I'm going 100 miles an hour and it won't go any faster. And I don't really think you need to go much faster in a Jeep, but if you want to go faster than that, here's where you're going to change it. So before we actually get into any tuning, we want to learn how to read a tune save it, save it as modded, license it, and then load it back into the vehicle. 